Welcome to another edition of the Dublin Kaufman Marching Band Network. I am here with Mahesh Shabreya. How are you, Mahesh? Doing well, Jeremy. How are you doing? Doing great. We are going to dive into a vocation here that not a lot of our students know a lot about. You are a 1991 graduate of Dublin High School. You went on to Ohio State where you got a degree in accounting. But right now, you are a part of a family business that your, that your father started, your mom and your dad, called Ramson Imports. Can you talk us a little about of what uh, being an importer is all about? Sure, I'll do the best I can. So, you know, we are bringing in the items from overseas and then we're a little unique in that we don't sell to the general consumer. We only sell to other reseller, other wholesalers out there. So we're bringing things in mass quantity and then reselling them, which is not your typical, uh, as opposed to like maybe Walmart, bringing it in and then selling it out to the general consumer. Uh, so think of us as more of the Sam's Club of Walmart where but you're not selling to the consumer you're selling to other businesses strictly um it's kind of the easiest way i can put it if i could i'm not trying to compare ourselves to walmart by any means but just to kind of give a correlation um the best way i know how well yeah we're not here to start any global wars or anything right <laughs> no we're just no, here to no. have a friendly conversation uh yeah. but um so now uh what is it that you sell? If someone was uh, um, looking at buying something wholesale, um, what type of items do you guys sell? So uh, that's an interesting thing. We kind of have a, two different levels there. The import side, which is actually our primary, we import items like flags, hats, lapel pins, uh, you know, custom, custom jewelry, um, any of that kind of stuff, bandanas, keychains, that you see in your regular gift stores or you might see at your local fairs and carnivals. Um, if you ever go there and say, well, where do they get this stuff from? Uh, maybe maybe us uh, is what we do on the import side. And we're actually bringing them in from overseas. The other side of it is we have a large section where we're buying licensed sports products from the manufacturers and reselling it. And the items that we carry in there are not your apparel, whether it's the hats or the t-shirts, but it's the fun stuff where you see signs, you see bumper stickers, decals, all that kind of stuff. We're buying from the license manufacturer and again, reselling it to other vendors. So when, uh, when we think of an importer, um, mm -hmm. how many, how many of you are there in the United States? Just like a rough guess. Is this, is this a vocation that, had, that has thousands and thousands of people doing the same thing you guys do? Well, I think there are a lot of people that are importing, but different items out there. So I don't have a number for you on that, but I would say that there are enough importers out there and doing stuff, but again, they're gonna specialize in a field they can't. Because it's very difficult to import vast items. Um, one of the things we do is we use a, a factories over and over that we've been using 15, 20 years maybe, just because they know who we are, we know them, we know the quality of what they're gonna the deliver. So if we go from flags to let's say you know, electronic item, that's going to be a totally different factory overseas and all the specs um, to do that. So I think there are a lot of importers out there, but they're going to be specializing in their specific product. Um, we, we do trade shows um, as well. And at those trade shows, you're going to find different ones. So we may have our exhibit set up next to someone who's doing all electronics. And on the other side, maybe doing just drinkware. Um, so it, it, there are out there quite a few, but they're going to specialize usually in a specific product line. So now, uh, Mahesh, take us through um, your, uh, your, your time in college. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, did, did you always know that you were going to work for the family business? Uh, yeah, I did. My mind's probably a little bit unique than, than a lot of other people out there, a lot of students out there. I, my, well... So the business, we just finished 50 years. I, I'm not quite there, as you know. <laughs> we, we won't give our ages out there yet, Jeremy. But um, the business starting its 51st year. So my parents started before I was even born, you know? And so I was always around it. I did my first trade show when I was 11 years old. Mm. Um, back in the days, my folks used to do like about 10 shows a year. And every chance I got, I was hopping to New York, Chicago, wherever they were, they were headed to try to help. Um, so I, I got, you know, a lot of practical experience out of it and I, I learned it. So I was kind of wrapped into it. And, and I'll tell you a little funny story in high school. I tried to take every single business class that Dublin offered. And we 
an accounting one class. I took that knowing that that's what I wanted to do as a major and they didn't have accounting two at the time. Well, we petitioned for it as students and believe it or not, we actually won the petition and they, they arranged for the class. There's seven of us in it. And then I get called down to the guidance of counselors and they go, uh, you know, we've got a conflict. Your period is, is you have to pick between accounting two and ban. <laughs> and these guys were, were, with all due respect to the guidance office at the time, they were just kind of like, you're called about pick. I'm like, are, are you serious right now? <laughs> you want me to pick between ban and what I want to do in the future major. And they they didn't realize it. And they just kind of looked at me like, oh, and I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Just put me in band. I'll take the accounting in college. I said, I'm not missing my senior year band and everything else with it. I said, no, keep me in band. So yeah, to answer your question though, yes, I kind of knew where I wanted to go with it. So, uh, the, so the person that, uh, in the family that created the class, couldn't participate in the class. That's, that's, uh, that's, that, that's a wonderful moment in time. Um, it, it, it was, and I love telling that story because I'm like, seriously, <laughs> you know, you're telling me to pick between what I love to do as you know, and, and what I want to major in. I, I get you. So you, you go, um, into Ohio state studying mm -hmm. finance. Um, when you uh, had that opportunity to, to um, know that you're going to go into the family business, uh, were right. you, uh, was your family looking for a specific thing, uh, like a void for you to fill in the company, or was this your greatest interest in getting a finance degree? So, no, so the accounting degree, actually. But I'm sorry, so, accounting degree. No, you're good. You're good. Um, so actually, it wasn't, well, let me step back. My, my parents never pushed me into it, but they never said no either. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, and I felt there was a void in the business. You know, I, I growing up in it and watching it, I felt like, where could I be the best asset for the company? And I said, you know what? I think accounting is something that my dad's not taking on head on. My mom's not taking on head on. Let me see if that's something that I could do. And I like numbers. Um, so I, I enjoyed math in high school and I said, okay, putting the two together, why not do an accounting, get a good business degree. And my other thought was by doing an accounting degree, I, I'm a big believer a business degree is useful in no matter what you do in life. Um, I, I just feel like you can't go wrong with a business degree. Uh, and I felt like, okay, I'm going to get a business degree regardless. If I'm going to specialize in something, let's do this. So that's kind of how I fell into the accounting degree. So uh, here, here you enter the company mm -hmm. and um, you then probably had to fill multiple roles. Uh, can you talk about entering the workforce and and what type of uh, responsibilities that you had as a you know 22 year old? Uh, and then we'll talk about what responsibilities you have now. Yeah, so you know, when I got in, one of the things I did also want to do because you know, when you talk about family business, sometimes people uh, say, oh, you're kind of taking it for granted, you're gonna get all the perks and, and you're all good to go. And I wanted to be careful not to be in that situation either so I obviously wanted to help the business and I wanted to do what I could and I, I did jump into the accounting right away because it just so happened we lost our internal bookkeeper so I was like okay so I had to pick up a lot of that slack anyway but I wanted to learn every aspect of it as much as I could um, if that means being back in our warehouse or if that means being at a trade show or if that means being on the phone whatever it took to to learn the different aspects um, because I really feel if you, if you don't understand them all, how can you lead it all, right? I mean, um, so that was kind of how I took the approach. I tried as much as hard as I could to be hands on when I first got in here. And so now, uh, fast forward, uh, you know, 20 years, 20 plus years, um, what, what are the things that you are doing today um, that are that's now that you know the business and 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 what is the difference in your job responsibilities from when you started? So I feel like a lot more I'm behind my desk <laughs> than I was back when I started. Um, just because there's so much more operational now. I'm trying, you know, in the management side of it, trying to keep things rolling, um, whether it be working with compliance, whether it be working with our license that we have, insurance or anything else legal or, or even the finance and accounting side of it. Um, just handling that, even kind of taking care of the staff, right? Making sure that everything's on board. So it's a lot more man managerial and leadership than it was probably in the earlier years, I feel like, um, which c consumes you. And, it, you know, <laughs> I, I kid, I said, I think I'm going to change my business card to troubleshooter instead of, you know, VP, because there's always seems to be something that comes up that you got to tackle um, on a daily basis. And, and let's talk about that. I, I, I like to know 
um, you know, what is it that you know, every job, it doesn't matter what vocation you follow, you, there, there's, there's good parts about the job and then there's parts of the job that, that you think about when you're not at work or you might wake up in the middle of the night. What, what are the things that, that in your world that are the biggest struggles that you have to, you know, figure out how to maneuver in your vocation? So, you know, I, I think, I, I tell my dad this, um, I said, you know, when you started the business, all you had to really do was find a product, buy it, and sell it. But I'm simplifying this, of course. I said, but today, the regulations that go behind it to keep things going, whether it be, you know, the immigration process. I mean, we have our, our brokers that take care of the paperwork, but we st I still got to be on top of it as far as to declare things, what's the right item, the, the tariff codes, or anything else that goes with it, and how to be in compliance with that. So there's always these regulations at night. So I kid him. I said, there's so many more regulations today than there were 50 years ago um, because we keep adding things to it, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, but, you know, they're, they're there um, that he didn't have to really deal with back in those days, I feel. So it, that's what probably keeps me up a lot of times just because I'm worried about, oh, did I take care of this or do I have to still handle that or, or whatever it may be? Um, Go ahead. No, I was just going to then flip the script on you. What is it that you just absolutely love about your job? I, you know, I, I, I think the one thing is, even though it sounds like a desk job and, and I'm behind it, no day is the same, it seems like. I mean, the, the basics are there, obviously, but it, it's similar to kind of being in the band, right? If you're a student, especially, you walk into the band room, you don't know what you're going to be playing that day until, the, until you get up on the podium and say, we're going to play this or we're going to work on this or do this, right? You just don't know. You know you're going to band. Well, I know I'm going to work, and I know I got certain things I got to take care of, but I don't know what's coming until I get here. And I'm like, oh, I got to take care of this or do that. So it's never the same day twice in a sense. It is, but it's not. Um, and I enjoy meeting the people. I mean, especially when I get to talk to customers when I'm out there and do deal interact with them. I think that's a lot of fun too. Well, um, you you have always had a great personality. That I imagine when you're on the trade show floor. Um, that uh, somebody's not going to sneak by you. You're going to find a way to uh, to uh, to have a conversation with them. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> now, um, let's talk about um, your your high school days. Um, you were in the percussion section here, and you and I were on the snare drum line back in the day. We graduated the same year. Um, yep. What is it that that you remember from your high school days that is something that the band has given you that here you are, um, 20 some, 25 years removed, what is it that you uh, think about that the band program gave you in your current job? Well, I, you know, I, I have to step back and say, I think the band's given me a lot overall in my whole life. I mean, I can't just narrow it down to the job. I think that would be a disservice to the entire band program that, you know, Dr. Keller has started and that you are continuing. Um, so I, I don't want to limit to it just to work if I may. It, um, but that being said, you know, I think the biggest part of the band for me would be the interaction with people and how to, how to, to interact with people, not just interacting. Um, you know, when you start in the band program, you and I were freshmen and you, you don't know how to tackle the upperclassmen. They don't know how to tackle you, but you, you grow in those four years um, in so many different aspects and so many different ways. And we don't even realize it, I think, until we kind of look back and say, oh, wow, you know, um, but I think that that's the neat part of the program. Uh, you know, we, we talk about the music and we talk about all that and that's fantastic. It don't, I'm not diminishing it because I love that part, but yeah, I think just the way we learn to grow as individuals is just amazing in, in such a program. Well, you're um, one one of the people that I can point to uh, that has kept music alive with them as they've gotten older. Uh, you're, you uh, have been playing for years in the Dublin Wind Symphony, and uh, which is a community band here. Uh, can you tell us what, uh, I know you love music, but what, what is it that you know, hey, every, you know, every, you know, Monday night, I'm going to head over to Scioto High School because I'm excited about playing in the band. What is that? What is that like for you? So I, I got to step back and tell you this a little bit, um, how, how that I kind of got me the itch for it. Um, you know, you started alumni band back in what, 2010, I think you, you brought it back that hadn't been there for years. Yeah. Um, and I did that. And after I played on that, I was I had an itch. I was like, I got to play again. It's been years since I played. Since I played a little bit in college. I, I played in the percussion ensemble for about a year and a half at OSU, and I did two years of basketball band, what they used to call it back then, and one year of spring band. So I had played a little bit, tried to keep the music alive in college. 
Um, but after alumni band, I just had an itch. I was like, I got to figure out a way to play. And shortly after that, I get an email from Dr. Keller that they were starting this community band. Um, and then when I found that, heard that, you know, Jeff Chester was directing it, I was like, oh, this is it. I, I got to go try this. Uh, um, never look back after it. Um, and, and we just love it, you know, and I think he's just the right fit for that group. Um, because while we, we certainly want to make good music, um, he's just low key on that podium where, you know, he wants good music. We want good music, but he always says is we're a family first, a band second. I mean, that's his motto basically. And, and we just have fun. Uh, we have a good time with it. So, you know, the, the old motto music is for life. Uh, yeah, it, it can be. It's it just, I think it's hard at that age to realize it until later on, maybe. <laughs> well, um, one of the questions I always like to end with Mahesh is to, um, ask you, uh, if, with all that you saw as a high school kid, you know, you, you show up in, in your freshman and sophomore year, and it's hard work, as you were uh, alluding to earlier. And as you get to be a junior and senior, there's some leadership things that go along. But, but there's definitely a point where you're in the band program where you're realizing that what you're trying to do is difficult. And um, as, as you look back on it now, and you know what the program has done for you and what music does for you if if you were ever the type of student that that was like you know what i i'm thinking about giving this up what what would the older mahesh tell the younger mahesh uh about what's in front of them and, and why to stick with it so you know i'm going to answer that a little differently if, 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 if i may okay um and i'll tell you a little secret that i have not told you this before in all the years that i've known you um you know, marching band, as you know, my, my freshman year was, you know, I was told I had two left feet, <laughs> you know, it, it was, it was well known, um, to everybody out there, but, and at every, about mid October, I, I would basically have a meltdown one evening. Um, I, I was just, you know, between, okay, the rehearsals and, you know, the sectionals and then your homework and trying to catch up with it. I would just have a meltdown at home. I'd go home one evening and I would just like uh, lose it. And I really would have to pull myself together you know, after I had that meltdown, let it out, which is fine. I think everyone's entitled to it um, and say, you know, this is what I like. It's what I want to do. And I got to keep working at it, keep plugging at it, um, it and keep going for it. And I would do that. But I would say every year in the marching band, I did that because there got to a point where it gets stressful and that's OK. You just you have to realize that that's part of it and keep moving. And I think that's what I would tell myself that. First, be happy with whatever you do. If you're not happy, you got to figure out what makes you happy. And then you have to realize if you enjoy the rewards of it, keep going for it, keep working for it, and it'll come. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to, to all of them out there, just just keep going at it because it's well worth it. I mean, if you're enjoying it today, it'll stay with you. There's so many aspects. I mean, if we had more, a lot more time, we could keep going on about it, but yeah. Well, Mahesh, thank you so much for spending some time with our students and, and our band family. Um, you have a unique vocation that, uh, that we don't always hear about. And so to learn a little bit more about what an importer does and what your family does, and also just your musical journey uh, that you're currently on right now, it's been outstanding to reconnect with you. And thanks for spending time with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. I really appreciate it.